Hi everyone, welcome to the second edition of the Java Tip of the Week. First of all, let me thank you for all the positive reviews that I got from my first edition, and let's go right away to this week's topic. So, let me talk to you about my favorite class from Java 8, which is optional. I really hope that you, all of you are using Java 8 already, because it's really cool stuff in there. Anyway, optional allows you to wrap a value that may or may not be null. This allows you to uh, make a lot of operations on that particular optional, um, and you don't have to check for null all the time. Let's see an example. Here is an endpoint uh, which allows me to get some person details. Um, I just changed the ID. And let's not discuss how the endpoint works or uh, how it should work because this is out of the scope of the video. Uh, but if I try to search for a person that doesn't exist, then uh, it appears doesn't, that doesn't appear to work very well. So let's try to return the default value when uh, I cannot find uh, a person there. Usually I will do something like this, uh, pre-Java 8. So this entity manager find will return a null if I don't find anything. And I can do something like uh, uh, person, a new person, right? And if this is null, I can create a new person. Let's see how, how this works. So now in here I can put like any value and then I get my, my default value back, right? But we can do better. By using optional, we won't have to do nothing like this. So uh, we could just do, do it like this. We can create an option. An option is created by saying optional, and then it receives the type of the value that you're going to put in. And then you call something like uh, the static constructor of optional dot of nullable, meaning that the value that's going to be there might be null. And now you can pick up uh, the entity manager response, or result, and place it over here. And of course, this doesn't work very well because now I'm returning an optional and I'm expecting a person. But I can come here to my person variable and call an or else uh, method. And this or else method is going to return uh, the person object if it's not null by the one that's returned by the entity manager on the optional of nullable. Or I can just uh, put here a new default person, and if the original person is null, then it's going to return this default one on, on, a, on a, or else. Uh, let's actually see if this works. So let's try to put an ID here. Yeah, there you go, Java tip of the week. Awesome. Now, there are a couple of other occasions that you might want to test for a nested uh, element inside of the optional, and that's also possible. Let's see how on the save person method. Now, for the save person op uh, method, let's do the same and transform person into an optional. Here we go. Now, see here that I'm actually trying to get uh, the person get ID equal uh, equals null. No. Uh, we can also do that with an optional, using map and person get ID. This is a method reference from Java 8. Uh, I'll talk about that uh, later in a future video. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, but now if you can see the URLs actually uh, say that you want a long instead of a person, uh, but that's not gonna look into that. In here we can say if present, And you can say an anonymous inner class in there. And if it's present, we can do something. So here we can pick up this part of the code, which is the opposite side of uh, if null, and put it over here. Uh, so this is now having some errors, but that could be easily fixed. Um, one of the shortcomings that I see in optional is that there is no 
if not present method, which will be very useful. But still, it's a very useful class to use. Um, play with it, see it around, and I hope it's, uh, you can make good use of it on your future projects. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time.